All right, check it out, guys. We got this uh, grease joint rejuvenator. I impulse bought this thing years ago and I never used it. Basically, the way it works is it's this tubular structure and you put some kind of light petroleum product in there of your choice. And then you got the grease joint end, which obviously you put over a seized grease joint. Then you smack it with a hammer and it forces the uh, light oil through this thing at like a zillion PSI and hopefully into the grease joint. Some of the grease joints on it will take grease. You can see that one did, that one did, that one did not, that one's bone dry. So, you know, I, I'm having a good day today just because I was even able to find this thing. <laughs> and I, I'm happy to finally have an opportunity to try it out. So let's see if it even works. To bleed air, hold upside down and tap, patent, whatever. Made in USA. How old is this thing? Tighten it down on the grease fitting, which you probably can't see. Good for it. All right, so I hit this thing like 50 times, and the fluid that I used, a little bit of it splooged out at that connection, or it might have been that connection, but um, I don't think most of it did, and it it did go somewhere. You can see I ran it until that rod is all the way collapsed. I've got the grease gun attached. This is the moment of truth. I actually blew the coupler out on my electric grease gun uh, the other day. Ah, oh, trying to get these to take grease. All right. Um, it's splooging. It's pressurizing. <clears throat> it's building pressure. Uh, I think it's just coming out around the, around the, uh, dang it. Okay. Well, I don't think it really worked on this exact grease fitting, but there's several others on this machine that need the same treatment, so I'm going to try those. All right, so I gotta tell you guys, this thing is kinda crude, but I gotta tell you guys, you know, to give credit where credit's due, it did get results. Now here's what I learned trying this thing out here. The main thing it goes through is grease couplers. You know, it's forcing thousands of pounds of hydraulic pressure through these things, and they just plain and simple can't take it. You can see that one's missing a couple jaws, and there's a rubber, gasket in there kind of like a goofy looking o-ring sort of deal that blew out on the second grease zerk that i attempted to use this thing with but somehow this thing still held pressure and i used it on another zerk after that now my success rate with this was not a hundred percent which one did we start with that one i could not get that one to take grease this one look at there look at there it took some grease that one opened up successfully this one opened up successfully. You can see a drop of grease right about there. This one was messy, as you can see, but it also opened up successfully. You can see it took grease. On the front here, this one opened up successfully. It took grease. This one, I believe, did not. That one still seized, and both of those are still seized. The one over there took grease initially. And that one, I don't think that one opened up. So I had a, I don't know what the math is on that, approximately 40% success rate, maybe a little more with this thing. You know, honestly, I don't even know what these things cost. If they're kind of cheap, especially for situations where it's a grease fitting that's really hard to get to, you know, it's on something that you can't just, you know, remove from the machine and like take to the shop and, and drill out the old fitting and tap in threads for a new one, do it right. Especially if it's something you can't access readily, it's worth trying this out on. Uh, now these, these little clamshell plain bearings here, whatever, they're fairly accessible. So I think I'm just gonna fix the, the ones that still won't take grease correctly. Okay, uh, but you know, like I said, this thing was partially successful. The main thing it eats are those grease couplers, but I'm pretty sure those are just the cheap generic ones. 
I think they're all pretty much a standard thread size or whatever. I think you can buy those for like $2 or something, something ridiculous. So that's not a big deal to swap out. The rest of the tool seems very well made. It does build and hold pressure. And you know what? Although it wasn't perfect, it did get some of these grease fittings going. So I'm thankful for that. I'll also say this is a pretty tough application for such a tool. You know, there's lots of dust. There's lots of, you know, grit and everything packed in there. This thing sat in the fence row for, you know, God knows how long. You can see the moss and stuff growing on it. So this is probably about worst case scenario. You know, if you've got a piece of equipment that sat in a shed for like five years, so the grease is, you know, kind of hard, but not just rock solid, it would probably work a lot better. Your mileage may vary. I'd be interested to know what you guys think of this thing in the comments. Uh, but, you know, it did work. Uh, by the way, I'm not paid to make a review of, well, anything in this video. Uh, I paid full price for this thing probably five, six years ago. I don't even remember what it cost, but it wasn't very much at the time. I'll throw in an extra bonus review here. I've been using my Milwaukee electric grease gun for years, but like I said, I blew the coupler out of it <laughs> trying to grease this thing. I grabbed this thing and, uh, and it's still working great. I bought this thing years ago, like when I first started my haying adventure. It's, it's a mystery meat, you know, grease tech off brand kind of deal, but you know, to give credit where credit's due, it's been great. I've owned it for however many years. Like I said, I just, I took it off the, uh, off the hanger in the shed there and, it was ready to rock. So, random review of the day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. I'm happy that at least some of these things, more of them now, are taking grease. And I guess that minimizes the larger job of actually having to change these things out correctly. But grease fittings are usually a standard thread pitch. Uh, you know, or, or like a, a small number, four or five different standard thread pitches. You can buy a whole assortment of them real cheap. I'll leave a bunch of links in the description if you buy anything. Uh, I'll make a couple bucks off the uh, off the Amazon commission or whatever, which is kind of cool. Helps make low-budget, non-sponsored content like this pasta brew. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. Neutral review. Neutral to slightly positive review, I'd say, of whatever this thing is. The IPA Grease Joint Rejuvenator. Oh, yeah.